Hey guys. So today we're going to try something different. Grace has been sick this last week. Uh, we haven't really been able to get out and do any real videos. So we decided that maybe we would give it a try and I would maybe cook a few things for you. Some Christmas favorites that we have around our house. So I'll let you know before I get started on this. As ridiculous as it sounds, this is halfway a dream come true for me. <laughs> Um, I can remember back when I was 12, 11, 12 years old, and I would watch Graham Kerr, The Galloping Gourmet, and Yan Can Cook, and Walk With Yan, and things like that as a kid, and I would sit in my bedroom, and I would pretend, probably a little too old to be pretending that sort of thing, uh, yeah. but I always thought I would have my, my own cooking show, and um, so, hey, if this is awful, then my dreams are dashed, and <laughs> that's the end of it right now, but at least we'll know. So the very first thing that we're going to make today is a Chex Mix. Chex Mix is super popular here in, the in Indiana. I don't know if it's popular anywhere else. I would imagine probably the south, the north, the west, the east. Let uh, us know. Where are you from? Do, <laughs> do you, you eat, eat Chex, Chex Mix? Mix? So anyway, you can use the recipe that you find on a box of Chex cereal. It's good. To me, it just doesn't have quite enough flavor and I like it to be a little more packed. So I'm gonna add a few extra things in. I'm gonna punch up the amount of spice that I put in um, and we'll see how it goes. So very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut up this butter. I need two sticks of butter that we're gonna melt. There's a dog hair in that bowl. Of course there is. We promise that everything is clean. It's just when you have a dog. Dog. You okay. have a dog, you know that life. Exactly. She doesn't even have long hair. Like, I can't imagine if we had a husky or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's a dog knock life. Okay, so like I said, we're going to get one cup of butter. We're going to get this into a bowl. One cup is two sticks. You got that right, my dear. One cup is 16 tablespoons, two sticks, four half sticks. Is that salted or unsalted butter? This is unsalted. This stuff is going to be super salty. <laughs> Yeah. You moved the trash can. What? Why do you have the footstool there? <laughs> because I was standing on a stool oh. because there's a light that hangs down here. So I had to get up and uh, put the light up high <laughs> so that my face. Oh, could Lucy not just blocked. crawled underneath the tripod. I am shocked that she did that. Lucy's an odd duck. We have the butter melted. This bowl that it's in is extraordinarily hot. So Now, uh, when you melt butter in the microwave, you want to do it in bursts of 30 seconds, would you say? Yeah, I would say th about 30 and then make sure that it's okay. And then probably maybe even 20 because it seems like 30 plus 30 is the magic number of you get to 30, 29, 28, down to three, and then it explodes. Like, so, yeah, I don't you know. That's the biggest thing. butter in the microwave. It's not so much burning as it, it just will explode and end up everywhere. So that's why I put a plate, a paper plate on the top of it to stop it from going anywhere. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to add four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. That seems like a lot of Worcestershire sauce, and it is. This is very salty, like I said. So if you don't like salt, you're probably Or if you're trouble. watching your salt. Yeah, then... Use way less than this. That's what I'll say because it packs a punch. Three. Actually, my normal recipe that I use. Are you just going to dump the rest in there? <laughs> <laughs> There's like three drops say, left. The normal recipe that I use uses five tablespoons of this, but I decided to cut it down a little bit just because well, I didn't want it to be too salty. But now we just add some extra anyway, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> So, then the next thing that we're going to do is we have the Lowry's Seasoned Salt. We are going to do three teaspoons of the Lowry's. 
teaspoon is a smaller version of a tablespoon. We got our butter, we got our Lowry seasoned salt. We're going to add a two teaspoons of garlic. Teaspoons, I see it right <laughs> here. So we're gonna get in there, just shake that off a little bit. Maybe we'll do one and a half because this is starting to get away from us here, I think a little bit. So one and a half granulated garlic, one and a half of granulated onion, one and a half. <laughs> okay. Which we buy in bulk from Sam's Club because every, literally nothing everything. that I cook in this house besides sweets does not have garlic and onion powder in it. Mm -hmm. Call it Maybe that makes me a lazy cook. I don't no, know. But the core four, salt, pepper. It's true. Onion Got a little garlic. bit of ground mustard. If you know us, if you watch us, you know that mustard is our favorite thing. So normally the recipe does not call for that. We're going to put probably a half teaspoon of that in. Just kind of shake it up a little bit. This is also the, probably the most you've ever actually used teaspoons or yeah, tablespoons. Yeah, I don't. Me that's the other thing is in my real life cooking, I don't measure anything unless it's baking. It's just kind of. This is how much looks like it goes in, and we go. So we're gonna put just put a few little dashes of Frank's Red Hot Sauce. I put that on everything. And then the last thing that I'm gonna add in here that I sometimes do, sometimes don't, just a little bit of steak sauce, kind of like an A1 sauce. It just gives a little bit of a wang. We'll call it a tablespoon. I think a tablespoon. Yeah. I am also. I once, at eyeballing things, so I do use. <laughs> I once learned that with liquids, like oil and stuff, that a lot of times if you just do like a one count, like one one thousand, that ends up being a tablespoon. So that's kind of the way I do it. Could be wrong. Who knows? So we're going to put all this stuff in the bowl. We're going to whisk it all up until it's just a nice little brown juice. A, a gravy, if you will. Does it look like an au jus sauce in there? It's real au jus sauce. Okay. So, next thing we're going to do, we are going to add all of our cereals and nuts and crackers and Dry all the good stuff. if you will. Yes. So, the normal Chex Mix recipe would call for rice Chex, corn Chex, and wheat Chex. I don't like wheat Chex. I don't know anybody that does. If you do, let me know. You're the one. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had wheat Chex, honestly. They're just, they're smaller, they're like drier, and they're, I don't know, weedy. They're kind of odd. So normally, rather than buy a box of rice and a box of corn, I will buy a box of Crispix because it has one side is each. So I can just buy one box and have everything instead of having to buy two boxes. Did they not have it? They did not have any. It's, I mean, it's Christmas time. This is when yeah. in Indiana you make Chex Mix, so everything was pretty much sold out. So we are going to do three cups of each of these. This is the rice first, or you do six cups of Crispix. One, two, three, three, three. If you know that reference, you know. How big of a bowl would you say that is that you're putting everything in? That's a big one. That's a big bowl. Hmm. Like, for this, I would say you probably want a bigger bowl than you think you would, yeah. because if you have too little, then it's going to be messy. Yeah, I've messed around for a lot of years with small bowls and flipping things out all over the place, so now we just go big right off the get-go, and then we're good. One, oh boy, <laughs> two and a quarter, three. Hey, we like the corn better anyway, so we're better with corn squares. They work just the same as corn checks, but they're half the price. Put whatever you want in there. Who cares? It's your stuff. That's Pretzel the best sticks. part about Chex Mix. Is at the core, you can put the same thing, but then it's like... Yeah, you're going to put... You like? What is the thing that you like more than others? Okay, well, I'm going to put more of that than others. We're going to just put a healthy little handful of these. My recipe will say a cup. It's kind of hard to measure cups of these pretzel sticks because they don't sit easily. That's way more than Nah. Nah. I like them. Grace doesn't. I'm going to eat them no, if she's not. No, I like not. pretzel sticks. I like pretzel sticks better than, what do you pretzel call them? Traditional raw, pretzels? Pretzel twisty things. You know, just when you think of pretzels. Your basic monk hug. Is that what they're called? <laughs> well, that's how they were invented, was the monks invented them, and they're like looking like you're hugging a child or Jesus or something. I don't know. Oh. 
So, Flavor Blast Goldfish. <laughs> Whole bag. They're better than the regular goldfish. We have, this is the secret ingredient. These are a little on the expensive side, but they so make it. up for it. These are the Schuler's Garlic Snack Chips. They're kind of like bagel chips. Rye chips? When I'm not, like when I'm not thinking, I call them rye chips. But I hate rye, and then I was thinking to myself, like, why do I love these so much? And then I look, and it's like, well, they're not rye chips. They're just, they look kind of the same as the Gardetto's kind. So if you do like the rye chips, you could probably buy those, and they'd be the yeah. same. They look the same. Yeah, they are. I want to eat one. All right, you put that in your mouth Thank and you. taste it. So they are more like a bagel cut in, in pieces. I'm going to be really crunchy for a second. <laughs> yeah. She's off camera, she's crunching. So these chips are, if they're there, now she's on, on camera. On camera crunching. Yeah. <laughs> so As I, you can see, we're both wearing our bear shirt. Go bears, it's Sunday. The bears. It's the day for Chex Mix. We won't talk about how the bears have been making me angry lately. I mean, they've won two in a row. Today could be three in a row, and they're in the playoff hunt, so. Yeah, it, we're not gonna talk about it anymore. There's no need to get upset. So you're at, so, you like the I said, bag? No. Like I said, these also are one that I'm not going to measure. I'll tell you about a cup, but we both like these a lot, so we're going to put a little bit more than probably a cup. You also don't want to leave them in there big, so we just kind of snap them off, drop them in, they're good. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to add nuts. Um, a lot of times growing up, and normally I would put mixed nuts, like the whole del deluxe kind. They're kind of expensive. The only time that I ever eat like the almonds and the pecans and stuff that are in that mix is when I'm baking or cooking with them. So uh, instead, I always eat cashews. I always eat dry roasted peanuts. This is a mixture of the two. I got two things from Sam's Club. I combined them because I just like to eat them together. I'm going to put about two cups in here because like nuts. nuts are the best part. To me. Okay. Now we've got all of our dries in. We are going to give this here, as, I, as you can see. Oh, yeah. You see all these crackers. Crackers and nuts and pretzels. We're going to give this sauce one more little whisk because it starts to separate immediately as it sits and cools. So we're going to whisk it back together so it's one solid state again. And we're going to pour about half of it. And we're going to give this a mix. All we're trying to do here, as you probably know, is just coat as much of the cereal as we can. If you dump all of it in at one time and then try to stir it, sometimes some pieces get super, super, super salty and some don't get touched. So we do it this way. And we'll put the rest in the second time. So, as you can see here... It's glisteny. It looks wet. It is wet. We're going to grab a big, this is a lasagna pan. A lot of times I'll do this in two separate 9x13 glass pans. Um, but today I decided I'm going to just put it all in one big lasagna pan because I don't feel like messing with it. There's so much butter in here that I don't necessarily know that you need to put the spray in there. But anytime that I don't spray any pan things stick and then I regret it forever so if it's overkill who cares <laughs> scrape it all yeah if I'm gonna scrape I'm gonna let you watch me scrape oh yeah get all that mess we don't want to lose any of that juice okay put that guy away we are going to spread this out into an even layer And we are going to put this into the oven that I forgot to preheat. Uh, so let's just pretend that this is a preheated 300 degree oven. Oh man, that's hot and 300. <laughs> Woo! That feels 300 y. This is a first time that we've been doing this. I'm working some kinks out. I forgot to preheat the oven. Uh, you're gonna turn it to 300, let it preheat. Then you pop it in, okay? You're going to cook it for 15 minutes, take it out, stir it. 15 minutes, take it out, stir it. 15 more minutes. So you want 45 total minutes, three stirs, and then we're done. So we'll show you what that looks like here in a second. So as you can see, the first 15 minutes are up. I'm going to pull it out. 
I'm going to give it all a stir, put it back in, then we're going to go two and three, another half hour, and then we're good to go. Here's what we're looking like so far. Ooh, looking like a snack. We just got to make sure that we get down underneath, get the stuff that's on the bottom flipped up to the top. You can just feel by spatulingling in it <laughs> that it's very wet and it's um, soggy. So it needs to sogify for an hour or so. Um, to cook the seasoning on, then you take it out, you let it sit for a while, and then it hardens back up and gets crispy again. So it's not going to stay soggy, I promise. Toss those guys back in. Back in the oven we go. So the biggest thing with the Chex Mix, you see, we're all done here. The thing that you definitely want to do is spread out a bunch of paper towel. I know it's a waste, but you'll thank me in the end if you just... Take this stuff out, spread it out on the paper towels. All it's really gonna do is just soak up any extra liquid butter that might still be hanging out. There's not gonna be much. It, it just may be a little bit oily, but in my opinion, if you just put this straight into a bowl or leave it in here and let it uh, cool without spreading it out, then it sometimes has a hard time hardening back up or it has maybe like a little bit of a greasy film to it sometimes. So it's worth it to me. Leave it out here, let it sit for, I don't know, 20 minutes, something like that. It'll cool down. It'll sop off some of the grease, and then you just dump it into an airtight container, put it on the counter, keep it for however long you can not eat it. All right, babe, so we got the Chex Mix done. It sat up for, I don't know, about an hour or so. It's hard. It's crunchy. It's crunchy. That's the best part about it. Let's, uh... Give it a taste here, you think? <laughs> I was gonna say, you can't really hold it up. Yeah. yeah, so again, since I'm sick, I got a little bit in my bowl so that I'm not putting my hands all up in here, but I'm gonna try and get one of everything so that I can give it a fair critique. So rice and Chex Mix, peanut, pretzel stick, goldfish, garlic chip. Is that everything? That's everything. Ah, I'll be darned. Cheers. If you do not have a nut allergy, I cannot recommend adding cashews enough because they give it just that little bit of sweetness because it's so salty, so cheesy, so rich, you know, especially with that Worcestershire sauce. Just that balance of the sweet from the cashews is my favorite part about it. It gets good. It gets really good and crunchy. It's just, I mean, it's good. I, I don't know what to tell you here. Just try it. I'm I am sure. curious, like, do other places not do Chex Mix? I'm sure everybody's had it a million times. Um, make your own. <laughs>